I'm speaking with Dr. Andrew Weil, a friend and advisory board member of the Gables Institute. Andy, I know you've been emphasizing the importance of nutrition and healthcare for a long time. Uh, what do you feel is the status of nutrition in healthcare today? Uh, I think it's pretty lacking. Um, that doctors are really uneducated in nutrition. They're not up to speed in, in cutting edge nutritional science. And as a result of that, they're really unable to give patients the advice they need about diet and dietary choices. I think they're also unable as a group to stand up and counteract the pressures from industry and stupidity from government that uh, really lead people to make unwise food choices. What do you feel are some of the obstacles that prevent nutrition and other lifestyle therapies from assuming a larger role in healthcare? Well, I think the major one is that the uh, real deficiency of this in the medical curriculum. You know, nutrition is consistently given very short shrift. When nutrition is taught in medical schools, it's presented as biochemistry, which tends to be forgotten when biochemistry exams are over. Uh, that has to be corrected. Uh, one possibility is to make nutrition a pre-medical requirement. Uh, it's even been suggested that that replace organic chemistry as a pre-medical requirement. You didn't find organic chemistry to be particularly <laughs> useful? Uh, one of my mentors, uh, Jim Dolan, a cardiologist, says that he can't right. think of a single instance in his clinical career in which he used anything he learned in organic chemistry. So I think that's been used as a kind of hurdle mm -hmm. for people to get into medical schools. It could be replaced by a good course in nutrition. And what about the incentives? Uh, how do you think the incentives are aligned uh, toward uh, adopting nutrition in uh, medicine or aligned uh, in the wrong way? I think the problem is that nutrition is just not taken seriously in medicine. It's not seen as a real science equivalent to pharmacology, for example. So it's consistently given short shrift, and that's too bad because it's obvious that nutrition is one of the cornerstones of healthy lifestyle and one of the main influences on our health. I think one of the very confusing elements for both the scientists and the public, certainly, is a lot of confusing and contradictory messages they receive about diet. Um, how do you feel that they play out and uh, what do you think we should do to rectify it? Well, I think there, there are really entrenched camps today with very um, strong nutritional philosophies often in conflict with each other, say people who advocate extremely low fat diets, people who advocate low carb diets, uh, no animal foods diets, raw foods diets. I think this is completely confusing. And, and the only solution I see is for a new generation of health professionals who really are educated to have an overview of this and realize that all of these uh, extreme uh, dietary proponents have pieces of the truth, but not the big picture. Hmm. So with that, um, what general guidelines can you give people to help guide them to an optimal diet? I think the main one is to really avoid eating refined, processed, and manufactured foods. You know, that's what's doing us in. That's what's changed dramatically in North America in the past 50 years. You know, we're eating more and more foods that are more and more removed from the way nature produces them. Um, I think just taking that step of trying to uh, eliminate consumption of refined, processed, manufactured foods and rely more on real foods, uh, get back more into cooking. You know, one particular category of refined, processed, and manufactured foods that I would ask people to become more aware of is sugary beverages. I think this is a major source of problems of excess calories. I think they're, they promote obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and that was an easy one to try to reduce consumption of. You know, one of the areas that I think you've led our understanding in is that of the glycemic load yeah. and about how to evaluate the quality of carbs. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about how people may not understand the full uh, health implications of some carbs versus others? Sure. Well, glycemic load and index measure how quickly carbohydrate foods turn into blood sugar. And... Uh, I, I think that's, that's a new concept that's not one that's easy to grasp. Um, you know, a good example is the confusion about whole grains and products made from grains. There are a lot of people out there saying grains are bad for us. Um, I don't think grains are bad for us, it's what we've done to them. There's a big difference between a whole grain or one that's cracked into a few big pieces and a pulverized grain, flour. Uh, most of the processed food the carbs that we get from processed food are from pulverized grains. Flour, it's all the pastries, pretzels, chips, 
you know, all that stuff uh, that it fills the middles of supermarkets and convenience stores. And there are many products out there that advertise themselves as being whole grain because the the whole grain has been pulverized, but it really doesn't matter from the point of view of glycemic index whether the bran is present or the germ is present. What matters is what the nature of the starch is, whether that's tightly compacted and hard for digestive enzymes to break down or whether it's converted into a material with infinite surface area that's very easy for digestive enzymes to turn into sugar. So I, I think you want to be wary of things like cereals and chips that advertise themselves as being whole grain products when in fact they're made from pulverized grains. Absolutely. So you've been uh, doing so much over decades really to help educate the public and to uh, put together conferences as the nutrition conference mm -hmm. uh, in Seattle uh, going on. Um, what do you feel would be the best approach for the public to try and promote a, a grassroots effort to change the way medicine is delivered? <laughs> well, I think people really have to get it. I mean, they have to understand the real nature of our healthcare mess. You know, the fact that, the, that conventional medicine is just way too expensive, that it fails to manage the common chronic degenerative diseases, the diseases that kill and disable people prematurely that it really is unable to address lifestyle diseases. Um, and I think that uh, there's so many vested interests that don't want to see anything about the healthcare system change that the only thing that's going to work is a grassroots movement. I would hope that enlightened physicians could help catalyze that movement. Uh, so that's one thing I've been trying to do. Well, you've been leading the way to yeah. make that happen. Well, Dr. Wild, thank you so much. Pleasure to talk to you.